What's going on everybody, Jhow here, and in this Diablo 3 Monk video, we're going to cover a Sun Wukong build. Now, a lot of people have been asking for a variation of this, and I went out there and I looked, and it doesn't seem like it's been updated since we saw some Sun Wukong changes in the later part of last year. So, if you've been around the Monk scene for a while, this is going to look entirely familiar. If you haven't been around the Monk scene in a while, then this is a ranged build that we're going to showcase here. I'm going to cover the skills and the gear to show you exactly what you need to make this work. So when we talk about the skills, Wave of Light with Explosive Light. This is going to be your number one damage dealer. It can be ranged with some gear options, which we'll get into here in just a minute. But this is going to be your main damage dealer, and we are going fire. Next up, for Dashing Strike, you're going to pick Blinding Speed. Now, this isn't always the necessarily the one that you have to pick, but it's one of the safer options if you're looking to do greater rifts. Gain 40% increased chance to dodge for four seconds after using Dashing Strike. And so to use this to get in and out of danger, and you're going to want to make sure that you're not near or on top of people. You want to distance yourself from the enemies as best and efficiently as you can. And one of the reasons why you're going to want to distance yourself is because sweeping wind with inner storm. While you do normally stay in a close quarter with this, I'm going to go over reasons on why you don't want to use this when we get to the gear section, and that's going to be the main part. Inner storm to give you that extra spirit per second. You are going to need it because wave of light, you will be spamming it as much as you possibly can. Speaking of spirit, mystic ally with... Air ally. Now, the reason you have this, now you're going to get the ally there beside you, but it's activatable to gain 100 spirit, and that's where it really comes in. You should have enough of spirit regen to where you're using this and not really finding yourself running around without using attacks. So mystic ally with air ally is definitely going to help. Next, mantra of salvation with agility, just a good defensive skill to have. Epiphany with Desert Shroud, again, good for defense and mitigating damage, but it also increases your spirit region, so this goes into the thing about having that spirit region while also being able to attack and have that with the defensive option. As we move our way over to the passives, Beacon of Etar, reduce all cooldowns by 20%. That will be good for your Mystic Ally and your Epiphany. It's really good to have around there to keep your spirit up. Next, Harmony, of course, another defensive option here. It's really good at greater rifts to keep you alive. It's almost in every build with Harmony. Next up, Unity. Each ally affected by your mantras increase your damage by 5%, up to a maximum of 20. You are going to be running Crudest Boots with your Mystic Allies. So this is going to help buff your damage a little bit bit more by having that extra ally there with you and also seize the initiative dealing damage to enemies above 75 percent life increases your attack speed now again you should have enough spirit regen to make this worth it you're going to be hitting hard and slow because you're carrying a two-handed weapon and you don't want to attack too fast but this seems to be the right balance if you have just enough cooldown reduction which isn't very much and you play this build properly this is actually one of the better talents if you do run into some issues you can go with the guardian's path but you should be fine running seize the initiative all right, so we're actually going to start in a little bit different section of the gear to first kick things off on how this works. Now, all this gear is pretty much 100% necessary outside of the boots, but we'll talk about that in a second. First, we're going to look at Sokrin's Gaze, the Spirit Stone, the helmet that you'll be wearing. Wave of Light is now cast at your enemy, which means that you can now use this as a ranged attack, and that's what makes this build work. Without this, this is a much more difficult build, and we'll get to the reasons why as we hit more pieces of gear. And one of those pieces of gear is the Incense Torch of the Grand Temple, your Daibo that you'll be using. Reduce the spirit cost of Wave of Light by 40-50%, to 50 which is how you're going to be able to spam this. It also increases your Wave of Light damage. So a great weapon to make this work. As, you, as I said, it's going to be required to have pretty much all of these pieces of gear in the main part to be able to make this work. Now the other thing to make this work really well is Pinto's Pride, the Bracers, Wave of Light, also slows enemies by 80% for 3 seconds and deals increased damage. So you're getting the slow there, which will go good with one of the legendary gems you'll be using. Plus you get the increased damage. Not too shabby, as you can see a lot of things are being used for Wave of Light. Now to the belt, Kiyoshiro's Soul. Sweeping Wind gains two stacks every second. It does not deal damage to enemies. Now when you go back to the skill section I talked about, you want to make sure you stay in range. This is the reason why. You don't want to have Sweeping Wind up and then not get this 
proc here to get those two stacks. And the reason is, is when we go over to the Sun Wuko set, the two-piece bonus reduces damage taken, which is nice. The four-piece bonus every second sweeping wind is active. You spawn a decoy, so that's added damage. But the real kicker is the six-piece bonus. Wave of Light will consume a stack of Sweeping Wind to deal 3,000% increased damage. And the reason that's important is because your attack speed is slow enough, but somewhat fast enough to balance out, to use a couple of stacks of Sweeping Wind with that one second that you get, Kiyoshira Soul will regen that back up to three. You'll get a little bit of Spirit Regen off of your Inner Storm. And it's really good synergy. So you can see that a lot of the pieces that are here are required to make the core part of this build work to be able to get the sweeping wind stacks back to consume those stacks with the Sun Wuko set to do the damage. And you will be chunking enemies hard. Now, if you deplete yourself of stacks, you will have to proc it again or activate it again to make sure to regen those stacks. That's a key thing to note. Now, you don't necessarily need any cooldown reduction, but getting a little bit on your shoulders and or your gloves is fine. Just enough to proc your Mystic Ally whenever you need that spirit. And then, of course, your Epiphany with Desert Shroud, not too shabby as well. One of the items that we also talked about was the Crudest Boots. Getting that ex extra Mystic Ally by your side with the Unity Passive is good. You can go with something else here, and there's a couple of other options, but Crudest Boots is probably going to be your number one choice. When it comes to the Jewelry Convention of Elements, a great ring to have just to boost up your damage. Not a bad choice there. And the other side, speaking of Unity, a Unity on you and a Unity on your follower will keep you from taking way too much damage in those Greater Rifts. So not a bad choice. And of course, you will be using the Sun Wuko's Amulet to use on that Jewelry slot there while you're using the Ring of Royal Grandeur in the cube, which we'll get to here in just a second. When we get over to the Kanai's Cube, the Kiyoshiro's Blade. Increase the damage of a wave of light by 150%, a no-brainer. When the initial impact of your wave of light hits three or fewer enemies, the damage is increased by 250%. Now, we already talked about the Daibo, where it reduces the resource cost of wave of light, but the other thing that you have to pair with it to really make it work, and the reason, one of the main reasons, why it is a fire-based skill, is the Cinder Coat, and it's gonna go in your armor slot. Reduce the resource cost of fire skills by 30%. This will allow you to spam for days without ever really depleting yourself of spirit. If you're managing to control your range and your sweeping wind stacks, you shouldn't really have any spirit issues at all. If you find you're having yourself with spirit issues, it's likely because you're not keeping your, your sweeping wind stacks up, but this is definitely gonna help as well. I just talked about it, the Ring of Royal Grandeur will help get you that six piece bonus from the Sun Wuko set to allow you to use the, the crudest boots and the Zoe Krenz Gaze for your spirit stone slash helmet. As we move over to the legendary gems, Bane of the Trapped will pair very well with Penso's Pride. Wave of Light slowing your enemies for three seconds will give that good synergy. You're gonna be at range, so you're not gonna get the aura effect, but you will get the effect of it when you use Wave of Light to proc that for Bane of the Trapped. Bane of the Stricken is going to be your other choice. It's not 100% necessary. At high greater rifts, Bane of the Stricken just gets a lot more value. But one thing that you will get a lot of value of is Zai's Stone of Vengeance. Dealing extra damage to enemies that are further away is just a clear-cut choice to get that extra damage. And Zai's Stone will pair very well with this build. So that's going to do it for this Diablo 3 monk guide. Again, if you've been around the monk scene, this looks super familiar. It just hasn't been updated in a while. For you guys that were asking for the Sun Wuko build, you now have it. If you're looking for more Diablo 3 content, be sure and subscribe or check out some of the other videos that are already available. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, happy hunting. See you again.